And they do believe that, essentially, it's the story of evolution, and you've got to have that increase in information. They How? believe it, but it's never been observed and never demonstrated in the laboratory mm -hmm. or the field experiments. Well, and how can losing information all along the way give you a net gain? You're a mathematician. Yeah, so it's just not going to fly mathematically or any other that's, discipline that's of science. Right. And the strong predominance of deleterious mutations absolutely guarantees the loss of information from the genome. Yes. And uh, furthermore, he says... Uh, there's so many different types of mutations. There's what's called point mutations, like one letter out of place, like a typo. Uh, there's uh, deletions, where you leave one out. There's insertions, where something extra is in there. There's duplications that shouldn't be there. There's translocations. There's inversions. And, and then there's mitochondrial mutations in another part of the gene, uh, of the cell from the nucleus. So. And this is all harmful or deleterious. That's right. And uh, we talked about junk DNA, and now we know that most of it is functional. It appears to be written in both directions, so he says it's doubly functional, as one of our other scholars that I quoted yes, earlier now says. Now, three-dimensionally, triply And so functional. if it's doubly functional, then a mistake is going to be even more harmful because it harms it from what was going to happen in either direction. Yes, certainly not beneficial. And the bad news is we are on a downward slide that cannot be stopped. Now, isn't that a bold statement? Mm. Now, someone may be tempted to say, but wait, won't natural selection take care of this problem? The answer is no, he says. There's an enormous chasm that exists between genotypic change, which is molecular mutation, and phenotypic selection, which is the whole organism. Whole organism and its reproduction. Yeah. So one little gene, you don't select the individual genes and then build the organism you want. You take the package. Yes. And uh, when Mother Nature selects for or against an individual, she has to accept or reject the whole organism. And as I said, it's a, it's a package deal. There. Package deal. And... Uh, he, he made the analogy like you're selecting a TV and uh, you don't go and select the individual pixels and then build your set. You basically s subscribe, you purchase the overall best picture. That, that's right. And uh, so that's essentially what he's saying in these sentences here as we close, you know, that you have to take the whole package. Now, other scholars agree with Dr. Sanford and they know that just uh, one additional mutation per generation is going to take take us downhill. Ultimately lead to extinction. Yes. Not the production Dr. of a new... John Morris, very fine scholar at ICR, says the current count of human gene disorders, and he names a few like Alzheimer's, sickle cell anemia, muscular dystrophy, and so on, is around 13,000. Now, not everyone has all 13,000, but the human genome somewhere... Yes. We have those. And we have in, many of them personally. In the human gene whether pool. Whether expressed or not. Yes. That's right. And uh, Dr. Joseph Mastropalo, who's also been here and is, is an expert. Fine scholar. He gave the count of known human genetic uh, mutations, and we're, you know, somewhere beyond 10,000 now. Let's take just a moment, even though time is fleeting, let's take a moment. In 1960, uh, we knew of 1,000 uh, mm -hmm. genetic disorders. 1970, 2,000. 1980, 3,500. 1990, 5,000. 2,000, 10,000. By 2010, since we already have 13,000 known genetic disorders, it's projected we'll have 30,000. 2020, 60,000. 2030, 100,000. By 2085, at the rate at which we're going, we're not evolving. This audience needs to know. We're not progressing. We are headed toward extinction if the Creator doesn't come back and correct our problem. And as you stated, and as Dr. Sanford stated, the scientific conclusion is mutations destroy life. They do not create life. Yes, and that destroys the primary axiom upon which evolution is built. Yes. And uh, so I was gratified to see that in his concluding remarks, uh, he said, even as we cannot create life, nor can we defeat death. In essence, it's been said, everyone is on death row. You yes. know, we are approaching... A, an appointment with our maker. But he provided an answer. He says, yet I assert that there is one, with a capital O, yes. who did create life and who designed the genome. He's called the author of life, Acts 3.15, and I believe that the author of life has the power to defeat death and degeneration. I believe that is the good news. Let's emphasize <laughs> that good news for the audience. Dr. Sanford has been quoted heavily by Professor Hefner today and with absolute justification. Dr. Sanford defected from the camp of the evolutionist, even thought uh, atheistic and agnostic thoughts in his life, 
a former professor, the inventor, in fact, is still a professor, inventor of the gene gun, one of the world's leading uh, microbiologists. And he was schooled in and taught and accepted evolutionary theory. But when he got to looking at the nitty gritty, and that was his specialty, he found that at the basic level, evolution does not produce higher orders. It loses the ground on which it stands. Now, he concluded with a statement, and Professor Hefter and I agree with this, there is one who created life and has the ability to correct life. Not only will he one day refashion us so that we will be made in his image completely, physically and in every dimension, but he also gave us an incredible answer to the deeper problem, and that's the problem within our soul we call the sin problem. Jesus Christ visited planet Earth. Our creator was made flesh, walked among us, went to Calvary, died for us, was placed in a cold, dark tomb, and arose from the dead. At this moment, that living Creator, Savior, is knocking at your heart's door. Would you just pray this simple prayer as you open your heart to Him? Just pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I have a problem. I'm headed toward annihilation, extinction, loss of life, but with an eternal destiny without you, hopeless, I need you. Lord Jesus, right now, I ask you to come into my heart. Cover me with your blood. Forgive my sins and give me life that you provided. I receive you as my Savior right now. Come in, Lord Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, recognizing yourself as a sinner and Jesus as the answer. Then he covered you with his blood. Heaven is your home and ultimate total repair is your destiny. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.